Hello, everyone. Before I go off to my morning walk, and I had some I uh, wanted to have from breakfast and just, uh, as usual, just spend the day writing and in quiet contemplation, I am delighted today to tell you, uh, to announce to you a project long in the making. My forthcoming work book, and it's almost ready. It will be ready by the end of the year. An introduction to mathematical logic. Popular demand has made me uh, restart what I was doing. I was writing, I am writing also a book on mathematical analysis, as some of you know. But there was a sense of urgency about the mathematical logic. Thousands and thousands of people have commented on this channel that they need this book. And I have decided to just get my hands dirty with ink and write the book for you young people who need it because it's no longer taught. And the book is at its heart a fundamental summary of thought, study, and reflection. It is really a careful attempt to illuminate one of the most profound and misunderstood disciplines in all of human knowledge. And it will be very useful to those of you who sadly are not taught logic in school, which I fear is the vast majority of you. This book is going to be very useful to those of you who want to get into, who, who, who want to get into mathematics, but you do not have the logical background for it. And so when you're reading a, a math textbook, like let's say, for example, Michael Spivak's uh, Calculus, uh, you do not, uh, many of you feel lost because you do not understand the logic symbols. You, you don't have a, a, a background in proofs of any kind. You don't even know what an axiom is. You do not know what a syllogism is. So the book is not a long book, by the way. It's really just a brute force, really. It is a journey through abstraction, reasoning, and the really what is the elegant architecture of the mind. And it is my hope that this work will serve. Uh, the, 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 it's a short book, but it's going to serve as both. It's sufficient to serve as both a map and a companion that's going to guide not just the curious, but also the diligent and the thoughtful uh, through the rich landscape of logic and set theory and preparing you to confront with clarity the often chaotic world outside. We already live in a very chaotic world. I mean, you speak to the majority of people. They have no logic. They, 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 their, their thoughts are fragmented. Assuming they even have thoughts, it's fragmented. Um, and I see that particularly more and more. The younger the generations get, the more I see this lack of rigor in thought. Uh, some people used to call them uh, flaky, you know, or, or I call them flaky and sketchy. But that's another uh, topic. But this is really most neglected in our educational system today. The lofty, rigorous, uh, and it's really misunderstood what pure mathematics, it's a kingdom. We really have a kingdom of pure mathematics. So we are living in an age obsessed with the useful, the immediate, and the shallow clamor of practicality. I keep, I keep hearing that all the time. How am I going to use this? Et cetera. But I beseech you, please, if you consider for a moment the silent beauty of reasoning, the thrill of abstraction, and it's really an unmatched elegance of truth, arrived at by nothing more than the mind itself. Can you imagine that? Uh, one of the things that gives me the most pleasure is being right. You cannot truly, a, a serious person cannot truly be happy unless you know you are absolutely correct in something. And only pure mathematics can really offer that, uh, really offers that. Uh, because it's really in those kinds of contemplations that is really far above the clamor of commerce and fashionable things that the soul of pure mathematics reveals itself. And some of you might be wondering, how am I writing the book, considering that I don't use a lot of technology? I still don't, even though I'm trying to adapt uh, for my students. I don't, because I, I, I view my teaching as something that it's for you, not for me. It shouldn't be about me, it should be about you. So I, tried, I do try to adapt as much as possible. And by the way, I am humbled by so many of your positive comments. I'm really excited. I have no words to tell you how excited I am about this book. But if you're wondering how I'm writing the book, it's hilarious. That's why it's taking longer. Some of you will find it hilarious, but it's just my style. I cannot do it any other way. So I am writing 
uh, I am first writing it, but I'm almost finished with the actual writing. Now I just have to transfer it. Thank God I have someone who's going to do that for me. They're going to actually type it, etc. because I have no time for that. Um, I can't sit in front of a screen all day long and just, you know, type on the, um, I can do that on the Commodore 64, but I use the Commodore 64 for other purposes, mainly to um, look at my old files and uh, just type a few things, etc. but not, not to write a book. Uh, I really do like uh, writing the book by hand first, as they did for centuries. And so, but I'm sitting, you know, in the, it, it's, it, it's really, I'm, I'm so blessed because I, I, as I write the book, I sit in the serene opulence of a 19th century cafe. I don't want to say which one because it's really a hidden gem. And if I say the name, uh, everyone is going to probably flock to it because people are always curious. You know, you get a lot of gawkers and I don't want to make them famous. I think it's nice as they are. It's opulent. It has marble surfaces and they catch the soft uh, afternoon light. And you even have inside, it's, it's amazing. It's wonderful. You've got stately palms that rise like silent sentinels and each syllable each symbol was um it, it really makes me reflect with patience reflection sometimes i'll have a coffee other times depending on the time of day where i'm there i'll have a cocktail as well of course uh and i'll still you know i have a little table that, and the, the people there know me already so they know exactly where i'm going to sit if it, you know assuming it's not too filled up i'll sit on the corner well, i like the corner i like to observe and i like to be away from the crowds you know because if you sit in the middle you get sometimes people visit, but I do like to sit towards the end away from people um, and just um, and just write and write and write. I have a, I have a lot of paper, uh, but uh, hopefully my writing is legible so that the person who is going to transcribe everything will be uh, it will be legible for that person. But anyway, uh, I am really, really excited uh, to to mention this. And, uh, but I have more to say today for you. Now, if you want to have an idea of what the book is about, like how it begins, uh, if you look at the Pure Mathematics channel, which I have linked in the uh, description down below, uh, I've, if you look at the last lessons I've given, it's actually from my book. Um, so if you want to have an idea of the topics covered, but the book is going to begin naturally, of course, with the foundational concepts of mathematical logic and the theory of sets. And I lay out in that chapter, the essential tools, relations and functions, for example, uh, Boolean algebra. How many of you in the high school level have heard of Boolean algebra? I doubt it very much. They used to teach it. If you look at any old mathematics textbook from the 1960s and 70s and even early 1980s before the intellectual decline of our nations, of our Western nations, uh, it's all in there. And uh, I even included, I included propositional calculus and the logic of predicates. And you will encounter, you're going to see the syntax. Also, I cover the syntax. You'll see that on the Pure Math channel to, to have an idea of the syntax of mathematical language. The symbols really that govern our reasoning and the classification of statements echoing even the venerable syllogisms of Aristotle himself. And each chapter is, I'm trying to design each chapter to engage you actively, to reveal not merely the what, but the why. Uh, it, it's sort of the, the reasoning you need to understand that breathes life into symbols and structures. And I assure you, it's not just an intellectual exercise. It really is a rigorous, you need to retrain your mind and start to think properly. An education in the art of disciplined thought. I was just reminded one, this was many, many years ago, I was interviewed by a, I can't remember if she was from, um, if she was from Sweden or Finland, but I think she was from Sweden. And uh, she, she was just very scatterbrained, the lady, she was all over the place. And uh, she said, I'm trying, uh, her quote was, she was talking about mathematics and she was trying to tell me, she said, I'm, I'm trying to help you uh, see math in a, in a different way. I said, how are you going to help me, if anything, if you cannot even formulate your question correctly? I said, if anything, I need to teach you how to properly formulate questions. A lot of scatterbrains these days. But really, uh, and then of course, when I start in chapter two, in chapter two, I'll get into the logical laws, the laws of logic from the, from, from the fundamentals and the text proceeds. Um, you're going to see the majestic edifice of logical laws. You have principles like identity, non-contradiction, and the excluded middle. 
uh, form the unyielding framework upon which reasoning is built. I also do get into a discussion in the introduction about the, uh, the paradox, right? Uh, and I, I discuss Bertrand Russell, etc., because you do need to know about that as well. It, it is a good point that he made. Uh, and I also uh, discuss uh, Hilbert, for example. But the mastery of these laws is not an abstraction without purpose. It's really the very scaffolding that allows clarity and precision in thought. And indeed, in life itself, a lot of people don't even know how to live properly. And I have structured the presentation in a manner that is both uh, rigorous and approachable. I give a lot of uh, specific examples and sort of commentary to train you in the classical virtues, because virtue is important in math as well, of discernment and recent judgment. And you then get into the, the last chapters. Uh, I'm going to lead you into the austere beauty of axiomatic formal theories from a few carefully chosen assumptions. And you have entire logical systems that you can construct. It, it, it's really incredibly powerful, revealing to yourselves the immense power of disciplined abstraction. And the book delves into proofs, structures, and the subtleties of formal reasoning. And you have a space where the mind is refined and elevated. So it is my hope that once you see, once you go through those chapters, you're going to come to appreciate mathematics, not as a utilitarian tool, but as an art form, a pursuit of truth and elegance, because that's really what it is in its own right. But the main problem so many of you face is that you are not used to, uh, you are not taught abstract reasoning in schools. And that is why so many of you struggle in mathematics. You don't know the logic symbols. By the way, the logic symbols, if those of you who are European and you are watching this video, let me know if I'm wrong. But my understanding is, and of course, Europe is very broad. I, we cannot speak of Europe as one country. It's not one country, uh, thank God, uh, even though the European Union tries to do that. But I am referring to the, the, in the, the general trend. Let me know if you are a, uh, in a European country, if you are taught the logic symbols, the, the universal quantifiers, for example, and all of that, if that is included in your math textbook, because I can tell you in the United States, they do not include that. They, in fact, in many, co even college level courses do not include uh, in many cases that unless you, you take a specific course in it, but uh, it's very, very unusual. In fact, even, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Stewart's Calculus. Ridiculous book. It's really a, a dumbed down version. Uh, of course, you don't really see those symbols in even Stewart Calculus. Uh, you don't see it in Sengage either. But, um, but at this juncture, speaking of all of this logic and abstraction, I really want to thank and acknowledge uh, my sponsor today because uh, I'm very uh, happy about it and uh, grateful to them. Um, so we're going to talk about today's sponsor, Brilliant.org, Brilliant.org, because in my own study of abstract reasoning, Brilliant uh, has proven a most admirable companion uh, when, you, when you see what's out there, when you see all the apps uh, that are available out there. For those of you who use the apps, it, it does not really just give you mere answers um, and it doesn't really give you shortcuts, but it, it really provides you, um, I've seen how they provide carefully structured challenges that guide you through the complexity or pattern recognition and true reasoning. And you can think of it as a, the great thing about it is it's a patient and unrelenting tutor. And City Tutoring knows a lot about tutoring. So uh, it's one of those tutors that uh, they're available 24 seven. Uh, we, on the other hand, as human beings, we have a schedule, but it leads you to uh, experience, especially the student, to experience the principles that you seek to understand. And some of the exercises, indeed, that I've encountered on Brilliant.org echo the spirit, in some ways, of the training I aim to provide in my book, because they, uh, you can see that they try to cultivate clarity, mastery, and a disciplined engagement with abstract ideas which is really a natural ally for any reader uh, who wishes to uh, have more practice. Uh, they also offer options for even computer science and coding. So let's delve into uh, some of their great characteristics. Brilliant 
helps you become a better thinker and problem solver with thousands of visual and interactive lessons in math, science, programming, data analysis, and even AI. Brilliant is a learning app that is really designed to be uniquely effective. Each lesson is filled with hands-on problem solving that lets you play with concepts, a method that has been proven to be six times more effective than watching lecture videos. Brilliant helps you build understanding from the ground up, and it has a perfect mix of engaging problems, competitive features, and daily encouragement that keeps you motivated and on track. Plus, all content on Brilliant is crafted by an award-winning team of teachers, researchers, and professionals from Stanford, MIT, Caltech, Microsoft, Google, and more. And so to learn for free on Brilliant, you can go to brilliant.org, that is brilliant.org forward slash city tutoring math and scan the QR code on screen, or you can click on the link in the description. And Brilliant also gives our viewers 20% off on an annual premium subscription, which gives you unlimited daily access to everything on Brilliant. So I want to thank them uh, once again for sponsoring this video. And so going back to the main topic, which was the discussion on my book on mathematical logic, you will see that the book continues into or ends with advanced topics. Uh, what we're referring to the classification of statements, formal semantics, uh, proof techniques in some cases, and the enduring elegance of logical reasoning that is extended uh, really starts with Aristotle, but into modern mathematics. And each chapter you'll see in the book is intended. Um, I really want to try to train you to see the thought, the structure of thought behind it, the challenge, and so that you can cultivate a deep appreciation for the discipline of thought itself. But this is really the essence of pure mathematics. It's not about the pursuit of practical utility, but the disciplined engagement with the truth. The idea of truth is something that has been lost. So the exercise of intellect and the refinement of judgment. And we are really living in a world that is eager to reward superficiality. But it is that's why this is so rare and noble. It's a noble pursuit. So I invite you all to join me on this journey. Uh, next week, Time permitting, I am going to let you know how to pre-order. If I, I need to know how many people uh, would be interested in pre-ordering directly from me, because of course uh, the the price is much better uh, if it's directly from me rather than let's say on Amazon or something. But you can uh, we'll, we'll look at options about that next week. So, but it's not merely a book; it's really an invitation so that you can cultivate clarity, your discipline, and your intellectual independence. Um, and so. When you pursue the introduction, you're going to see that there is a lot of gaps in your knowledge. And I will be giving you snippets, uh, like you say, in the, in the Pure Mathematics channel, as you've seen uh, already, you have some uh, an idea of what of what the book is about. Uh, I still have to uh, do part two of the other video uh, of the logic video, the introduction to uh, logical symbols. Uh, and that, that will try to get that done this week. Thank you all, as always. I am very, very excited to be sharing this news with you all because I think so many of you are, uh, there is no book like it uh, on the market, especially not aimed at uh, undergraduates. It's really aimed at undergraduate students, but also high school students. I think a high school student will be perfectly able to understand uh, mathematical logic. Now, it is a an introduction. It is not a, a textbook. It is not a full textbook. I'm warning you. Don't expect, you know, the thick. Uh, it's really just a, a bridge that's it's going to help you bridge the gaps that you already have so that once you read it, then you will be able to tackle a much more formal textbook. Thank you all. And I, I thank you all for your support. And uh, I hope to be in touch with you all soon with more details about the book.